Yeah, say this was a six inch valve. So it'd be 100 times six would be 600 pounds of force to open this valve. And how we overcome that is line pressure to close it. So you got that same 100 PSI on your inlet, but you want to close that valve. So now on this top of the valve, it's, it's a bigger diameter than the base of your valve, than your inlet, inlet valve. So it takes that 10 inches times 100 PSI, 1,000 pounds. So you take that, you put it on top of the valve, it'll close it. That force overcomes the inlet pressure on that valve. That's how it, from two inch, any of these valves is how it works. Your inlet's smaller than your cover. And that's how you'll be able to keep that down force, close that valve. Any questions that are rushed through at all? You got the basics? Go ahead. Do you think the swing force is negligible or? Negligible in comparison. Yeah. You know, when you're talking to, there's a couple hundred pounds of difference. Yeah. So, real small now. Just a reminder, basics on how these valves work. Water on the cover, close them. Water off the cover, open them. So when you're going to troubleshooting, you're having problems with valves. If you remember that basics, it's gonna help you through that whole process. Let's see if it works. In this case, you just a little automation of how it all works. Water off the top, opens up the valve. Water back on top, close the valve. Can you do that one more time? So oh yeah, no problem. Okay. So there's the water coming off the top. Valve opens up, flow goes through. Set to close. Water comes back on top of the valve. Close the valve. Same thing you could do with the mechanical press, right? But just, you're just using the water pressure. You're, just, you're using the pilot assembly, so uh, most of the first part we'll get, we'll get into, and then you're using that, that inlet pressure, your constant. So the inlet pressure being 100 PSI is what drives either opening or closing, yeah. just depending on how it's valved. Just depending on how it's valved and then how you, know, how you have it all set up here. The spring as well, right? Has to be the spring inside your pilot assembly will be that's that we'll get into that that's going to set your pressure which is going to be to modulate you know control your pressure through. good all right and that's where we get into what your automatic control valve consists of your main valve body but then what you're going to tell that valve to do is based off of your pilot control system And then two styles of these, you have your true glow, and then you'll have your angle pattern. And whether it's clay valve, aims, any of the valves on there, you know, to, to get your parts, to be able to work on it, you need all of your, your name plates, your serial numbers. Uh, a lot of valves will be on the bigger valve, you'll see them on your flange, the smaller valve you'll see them on your body. And flow direction. Most of them, I want to say you're probably going to see the normal flow, where that's up and over the seal, and then you, but they do have reverse flows. And basically what this comes down to is, if you have a normal flow, <coughs> make sure I'm telling you the right thing, when it fails, it's going to fail in the open position. Now, if there's a certain scenario where you want it to fail in the closed position, that's where you can go with reverse flow. Not as typical, but there are situations maybe that's going to happen. That's basically what that comes down to. So we'll start off in the level control valves. Um, just a couple of basic level control valves they have out there. You have a float, and then you have a floatless, or call them altitude valves usually in our systems. Uh, floatless can be real simple. You know, there's a certain level of tank, it drops, opens up that valve, fills up the tank, Flow comes back up, shuts off the valve. Real simple. I think what we have left in ours is like day tanks and some of our sewer stations where you have the air gap. Real simple, you know, for your bathrooms, water, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's what we usually see the flow valve now that other systems have in different places. And then we go to our flowless altitude valve. And uh, flowless altitude valves, 
basally measuring the head off your reservoir, and you have pressure settings, you know, where the head comes down off of it, valve opens up. Usually it gets around like eight to 10 inches below that set point. The valve will open up, fill back up, meets your pressure head setting on your, your closed valve, closes the valve back up. And the same thing, base operation, storage tank, get your sensing line, all those springs are all that, that whole pilot system that, that measures the head. Just kind of going over the pilots on the uh, altitude valves, three-way pilot valve design, your spring adjustable, and reservoir level sense that the pressure head changes. We'll roll into pump control valves. Uh, pump control valves uh, for your pump station wells. Um, instead of mostly, you know, from these type of pilot assemblies, you have your solenoid. Here's the modern solenoid switch. Boost control valve here. I don't know if it's going to pop up in the way. Let's see. Just going to do it. Same type of operation, you know. Water comes off, opens up, water goes on, closes the valve. Same technical basics off your valve here, just different pilot assemblies. Let me jump in going up, coming up here. So you're, like on these ones, it, it'll show it, but on your, on your pump valves, your pump's gonna kick on, usually, and it'll go kind of into a go there. This solenoid switch gets the signal, it starts opening up that valve, and they have little uh, limit switches here that'll tell your pump that once this valve's open, that it's open. Kind of, you know, there's little alarm switch switches inside your panels, things like that, um, along with your, you know, your high pressure switch. And then when they close, it'll hit this solenoid, tell the valve to close, that'll start to close. And when that limit switch hits that bottom position, that close position, that's using the kill switch for your pump. Nine times out of ten. Same thing for wells. Uh, especially on our well city Pleasanton, we have one valve that this is discharges to atmosphere. One of them that kind of splits the atmosphere. And so that's we actually uh, took care of one, opened it up, and you probably rocks and gravel, surprisingly, but it gets in the system somehow. But uh, I've had to pull them out, um, even dealt with uh, like flocculation, just different things in the valve, surprisingly. Recycled water has got a whole other gamut of stuff, but all of a sudden you're finding your head of your valve, in your valve. It really, um, we've had some issues with pilot assemblies, I think we're kind of getting maintaining them and, and figuring them out. Um, but uh, stainless steel works really well. Uh, high pressure and so far with recycled water. Show them what you're you finding them. Turtle. <laughs> I found lizards, I've seen, I've seen lots of different things. All right, so we gotta go up to the, uh, any questions on that kind of stuff before we go to start procedures? Am I moving too quick for you? I just kind of keep, keep it moving. I don't keep too stagnant on it. Um, so you start off, all your isolation valves close. You want to slightly open your, your inlet isolation valve. Uh, you got your gauges to help you adjust the pilot controls in position. Uh, you want to bleed air at all your high points. That's the most important thing when you're starting up on these things, whether you maintain it or it's brand new. Get all the air out of it. Otherwise, it's not going to give you true what, you know, what that valve is. It's not going to work properly, but it's really going to mess with you. Um, you want to fully open that inlet isolation valve and then slowly open the downstream isolation valve. So with all these things, the biggest thing to remember is to go slow, um, especially in those areas where we come from 120 and we got to knock it down to six. It's going to sound like a jet engine is going off inside that ball. You're, you're down to the ground, you're in the ball. It's going to be... It's gonna scare you, even though nothing's really, you know, it's, it's just how it goes. You know, it's like being next to that 12 inch gate valve on a main brake. If you were right next to it, closing it, you would scare it. You know, you're six feet above it on the ground. So take your time, go slow with it, and watch that valve start to work before you ever start opening that fully downstream valve. 
I have a basic question. Yeah. Uh, what do the acronyms CRD and CRL stand for? What's that? The acronym CRD and CRL. So CRD, that's just what they call their pilot assembly. So this is, it's like a reduced, CRD is your, I just call it smart pressure side. Okay. And then a CRL goes on my pressure relief. I know there's probably true, it's like a reduction valve, they call them for, for each type of system. And that's a clay term? This, yeah, this is a clay valve term. Um, so, same thing, pump control valve troubleshooting. You know, check your electrical system, check your pilot. Um, there's a manual operator. So, a lot of times you'll see guys, we walk right in the station and we'll just look at this. And that opens and it opens up that valve. You know, so you're just, you can hit this and it'll operate. It'll operate the pilot assembly. It will open the valve. It'll operate that whole pilot assembly. So you'll know whether it's working properly. So it'll drain it off the atmosphere and then close it back up. Because inside here, there's checks. So even if that diaphragm goes up and down on your pump control valve, there's a check valve. So the water's not going to come back in your pump. So they're kind of a dual function that way. But you can modulate to make sure your pilot system's working properly. So now, I'll put that I'm going to put that water back on top of that valve. Other thing that means I've had the solenoid switches fail. So the pump will fully open up and it'll hit that solenoid switch, but then the timer will shut the pump off. It's not really getting that signal. So sometimes that'll happen. Um, I've had the pilot assemblies, these two ball valves, be closed. And the pump come on, they'll run. But when the signal from the comes back to turn that pump off on set points, it will not close that valve. It'll be stuck in the open position. So someone will maintain it, they'll come in, they'll close those valves, they'll leave. Next thing you know, it's like, why is my pump not shutting off? So maybe, you know, just be cognizant of what you guys are, when you're out there maintaining them. Uh, like anything, even like you are, your HOA switches, all kind of stuff is another one of those, you know, type of items that you're, you're looking at when you're maintaining these. Well, pressure reducing valves. Um, these are a couple things. If your valve fails to open, obviously you're checking your inlet pressure. Um, you're checking your CRD. And you're looking for the same type of thing. Like I talked about that rusted CRD spring. Here's the spring inside there. Uh, like I said, they are color coded. There's red, green, different pressure set points. Um, we have seen these rust out where our stations have been underwater maybe for a year. You know, if someone's seen them, it's it. Sometimes it happens. You hope not, but you know, or you look down there, it doesn't look like it's underwater where your pilot assembly is, and this will rust out and then basically change your whole spring function. You know, it's nothing like it was set up to be. Uh, dragging yoke, um, your plug speed controller. So same kill carrier where we're at the rocks. Um, the valve will not will fail to close. There's a small needle seat in here, and it doesn't take a whole lot to get in there and plug it. Um, so this controls how fast and, and how you know, your valve opens and closes, but it can also affect if your valve closes at all. So it's something to also pay attention to. No, this is, this is uh, it's a, it, that's their CD, it's a, it's a speed controller. You usually have, say, a wide strainer or have top strainer. You should have, yeah, you should have a wide strainer, you know. As long as your wire strainer is good, and nothing's happened to it, and you're hopefully keep 90% out of it. Sometimes it takes just a little bit, and I included in that little packet. Um, yeah, the back page will have the CV on there, and each one of them will have. Um, the cool thing about those is on the CRD and the CRL, they'll even give you a guesstimate on turns, on and how much pressure will it increase or decrease for your turn, which is helpful. The smaller ones, I think one turns like three PSI. You get into some of the bigger ones, it can be 20 PSI. So it's good as a reference as you're out there maintaining, you're working on them. It's always nice in the back of your mind that, okay, that should be about three, or you're firing up, you want to set it at 16 or 15, you know, okay, that should get me, that should get me close. That should get me in the ballpark. I'm not going to fire it up and all of a sudden I'm 20 pounds over what I thought it was. A little more pressure, uh, 
troubleshooting for it. Valve fails to close. Rocks are green, your main valve. Sitting on your seat, not allowed to close off or up and close at all, or close 90% still seeking through. Um, you got a worn disc on your CRD. That's here. There's a there's a diaphragm and then there's a disc on the bottom of it that basically seats up and down based on what you're pressure sensing. Uh, Dragon yo plug strainers, um, diaphragm might need to place, and then your plug speed control like we talked about. So troubleshooting your, your CID, CRD. Um, there is a cover vent hole that you do check to make sure right here. And then you have a your pressure gauge, uh, your adjustment, you're checking your disc. These are really simple to rebuild. Basically, yeah, you have a seat on the bottom, your diaphragm, and a spring. Really, really simple. And then your alignment. And you'll see in your cutout, you'll see there's a, you have to make sure the yoke's aligned so that it seats properly. You don't want to drag it, otherwise it can move up and down and it'll be fine. I have up here, I can take them apart for you guys afterwards and <laughs> you can take a deeper look into them. And that's that seat on the bottom of the yoke, so that lives right there. And that's the seat on the bottom. CRL, so for your release, individual check, cover vent hole, pressure gauges. Very controlled adjustment. You, know, you check your disc, you check your seat. They're really, it's just uh, another sensing line, otherwise they're really, really similar. As far as the internal parts, really are similar. And then your automatic control valve to control your surge, you can control pressure, and you can control flow. So I know a lot of pump stations, a lot of ours have the surge anticipator valves. They're incredible. Um, you know, your pump hammers. Uh, we had one that uh, the solenoid hit before the valve actually closed. And you hear a, a water going right through that, that pump. And then you hear that surge anticipator fire up and bleed off. It was, it, was, it was a trip. It was all because that solenoid was shutting that pump off before that valve actually closed. So it, was, it wasn't adjusted properly. Control level, subject to failure, like anything, um, and a mechanical piece that we need, need to be maintained. So why they don't work, misapplication, misinstallation, no water, electricity, sensing line that aren't connected or clicked properly, um, inadequate maintenance, but we don't want to talk about what happens, unfortunately. And then, so preventive maintenance of the program. Uh, these do not need to be rebuilt every year. They will last five years. They will last longer, I know. You don't want them to, but they will. Um, if you can get on a program where you're replacing all the internal parts every five years, um, you're cleaning especially nice once a year, and you're actually keeping these like, accurate records of it, you're ahead, you're doing well. These things will work for you. Um, we're trying to get there. I'm gonna be honest, we're, we're not. And it's, sometimes you gotta be honest with what you got, what you're doing with it, but we're trying to get there. Um, we got a lot of them in the system, a lot of different places, and uh, some get uh, some get passed over. So we're working there, get the records accurate, um, get them rebuilt every five years, and, and try to at least see them every year. At least open them up, pump it out, they, you know, pump the water out of there just was a goal sometimes when you're, you know, you're working on that, so. Just try to get to that point. Now your rebuilds, like I said every five years, depending on your water quality. Like if we do have that recycle turnout, uh, that will be, be most likely every two years. I've opened that thing up a couple times in the first year just to get everything dialed in. So that'll probably be an every two year valve. Um, now we've already you know, allocated that it's, it's on that schedule. 
So that's, you know, like I said, we're trying to get to the rest of them, but that one's one of those that's right away. Is that the one on the stone roof? Yeah. And then, yeah, complete rebuild consists of cleaning the main, main valve, uh, cleaning all the pilots, replacing rubber parts, and uh, metal parts, the valve bodies. I haven't seen, I haven't really replaced any of them yet. For the most part, unless you have, we'll see how the recycled water does with the coating and everything. Um, I found eight valve coatings and strainers on meters, so I'm kind of curious to see how the, uh, the valves do themselves, because I've seen it hit some other valves in the system. So everything's changing, unfortunately, on that part of it, but yeah, we'll see how, see how they do. And then, yeah, keep the record, keep the track. I don't tell you guys that. This is, you know, we all get to that point where we can look back and be like, yeah, we rewrote that, that valve in 2017 and it's due this year. It's on our R and R, ready to go. But, uh, yeah. And, and also, even looking back at your notes, um, what you've had to do out there before. Have an operator go out there and like, yeah, there's been rocks in the main left main body of that valve. It'll help you really with the troubleshoot. Help each other out. Um, something we tell each other as operators all the time, but just kind of think you thought of it. And then, yeah, there's always technical support. Um, always make sure you have training manuals. There's troubleshooting manuals. Other people in your in your division that'll help you out as you work on longer, maybe. That's about it. Now, did you guys have anything that you guys seen in the field, or you want to want to add to help each other out, or any stuff you have questions about? Are there are there any um Solutions, say uh, something that could be done without having to uh, take a valve apart and run something through the cleanse it. You know. Yeah, you can actuate your sensing valve. For I mean, the last thing I'm going to do is take this valve out. I want to go through. You want to go through your whole pilot assembly before you ever remove any of this stuff. Because most of the time, it's, it's in your pilot. You know, there's. Very few, like I said, the only time I know where we have some rocks in the system, you know, that's still gonna be the last thing I do when I go out there, just because there's a better chance of it plugging the speed controller, you know, because one, one of the things is if your valve isn't closed, a lot of people want to open this up, they think the seat, they think there's something on the seat, but it could definitely be this. It could definitely be your speed controller, not let it close. So go for your power something. You can flush it, um, you take that valve, you valve it off, and then, you open up all your ports and you flush that valve. You need to take it out of the system, obviously, because you don't have control of it, but you're gonna leave your inlet open and you're gonna flush your whole pilot assembly, top of your valve, pilot, pilot assembly before you ever go take this off. Um, how does, uh, say, uh, high uh, concentration, uh, hypo, uh, you know, effectively bleach maybe about 50 parts or something, how does that affect the assembly if you just flush it through it? Um, that I, I don't really know. So, I mean, on our well sites, this is before our, uh, our injection, um, and then everything else is, you know, distribution where it's already knocked down too far. Um, I, I would wonder about your diaphragm, you know, like your rubber parts, or would I be worried about? Um, probably not the sort of, you know, maybe, maybe stainless steel rather than bronze, you know, like if we've got those in our high pressure sites and we have them in our recycled water. Um, they tend to do, like I, on our high pressure sites, I have, a, I have one in there from the factory six months, and then I have, I have a stainless one in there now for six months. So, you know, it's like, you know, look at that that kind of stuff, and, and you're going to consult your manufacturer. Just, you know, let them know this is, what, this is what's happening there, and get their recommendations. So you mentioned here. Okay, so you're talking about play valves. Can we draw the conclusion that that's true for every kind of I've seen Ames, um, you know, the full stainless steel bodies that we have as well. Um, the pilot assemblies, really, really similar. I, I've even rebuilt the Ames and threw a clay valve pilot assembly on there, and it's working the day, still as a pump control. It's still in operation. Um, really, it's, yeah, water comes off the top, it opens up, water goes back on. Yeah. So, so you know. Can I open that up to everybody? I mean, if he's talking clay valve and Ames, have you guys worked on other manufacturers, anybody? Yeah. Ames at all, or you know, get those full stainless steel body ones out there, some control valves. 
you guys work with stay valves or really anything you want to add to help me out because <laughs> I, I, I guess where I cut my teeth on, I've been running on my distribution system now as a doing all the mains and water repairs for the last couple of years. Well, so. I seen one and the gauges were just bouncing around like this when it was going to get the Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so it was going through the bypass. And it was it was like 180 knocking down to 60. Oh, wow. It was a six inch going to a two inch. Oh, yes. And so you 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 were close you close your six inch and you set your fire up to two inch and it was trying to I wonder if the uh, that's dropping down quite a bit I wonder if the spring rates are right I don't know you know that's why I wonder you know because a lot of times you won't use that bypass to go do maintenance and then maybe your spring rate in your CRD is set for thirty to sixty you know I don't I'm not sure that, for it to bounce like that some you know I your valve ice like I said fine but I the power was some maybe wondering if they had the right spring rates. Um, yeah, um, as an operator for a Dublin Center loan and working with Lachlan often, mm -hmm. uh, it's my job to check that plug and turn up. Okay. Um, is there anything you would recommend someone check on a quick turn, uh, rounds? Like I just look at it, make sure nothing's leaking, try to see the stable. And yeah, if you can look at like the pilot assemblies, you know, make sure they're not leaking. And then, yeah, like the, the gauges are stable. Sure. Um, can we see the flow and we see the pressure and let out the pressure on skate as well. Sure. But that would definitely help out. I mean, a lot of times we won't know if that pilot symbol assembly is leaking. Okay. I mean, how many vaults you guys opened up and shh, you know, you get down there and you got stuff spraying. Oh, all right. It's still working. Right. But it's going to eventually fail when that hole gets big enough. We just won't know it until we get that high pressure car like, hey, you guys got water running down the gutter. Your relief just pulled the open. Yeah. And uh, you roll up in the middle like, oh, man, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anything you guys can add or what you guys seem to feel, please. Um, I'm trying to share some of my experiences, but it's, that's how you learn from this stuff is, is learn is those experiences, you know. Go ahead. And the level control valves, which one do you like better, the flow? Or the floatless? Uh, we control. mostly have floatless. Like I said, the only float we have really left is in a, maybe in our small day tanks or sewer station. Um, most of the altitude valves are at, you know, like our 1100 right now, we have it just modulating on level on the floatless. Um, a lot of the other ones we don't. We have one station that, uh, or one tank that has a multiple tanks in the zone. That when that tank will reach 21 and a half feet, it'll actually close. But we have other tanks for that water and pressure to go to. The last thing you want to do is set a hammer up, you know, with your pumps. But uh, that's, a lot of them are locked open. I mean, you know, it's just, that was one of those things we did a lot in the past where we would run them on altitude valve and that altitude valve would close and that was something, you know, now we set our, our, our levels through skating. So, but yeah, uh, they, they work, I'm sure. I mean, they're still out there. Using them on, on a water tower, some of their you know reservoirs. I mean, they're really simple valves. You know, really easy to maintain. 